and welcome back to Art with Miss Choate. Today what we're going to be doing on Art with Miss Choate, we're going to be using the simple supplies we have around us and we're going to be learning how to draw a realistic dog. Now for this dog, all you're going to need is an image of dog or you can use the image that I'll be using. That's up to you, but I'm going to teach you the simple ways that we can break a dog's face down into parts and be able to visualize it without thinking about the whole thing at once. We're going to break it down the same way we break down a human face and think about each section. So today you're just going to need a pencil and a piece of paper and make sure we're ready to add value, shading. All right, let's go get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to block out our dog's face. So we're going to be doing a center line like we would do on a human's face. And we're going to be drawing a line through the center where the eyes are. We'll make a little mark at the top of the head, make a mark at the chin, slightly above is the mark for the lip, slightly above that is the curve at the bottom of the nose, the curve at the middle of the nose, and here we have our blocked out dog's face. Now that we have our guidelines sketched in, we can go ahead and start to fill in some of the detail. Now remember these lines should be really light so you can erase them later. And remember you can be doing this on top of an image you have just for the first time of practicing. So I'm going to start by doing the outline which is here's the top of my head. My dog's ears are a little bit spaced more apart. They curl up, they come back down, and I'm watching everything like it's a line, like it's a shape. The ears are a triangle shape. So I'm going to fill in the rest of the ear. They fold down. And I'm drawing light and sketchy for this. Now there's a faint line here for the shape of the head as it comes down. Now before I go keep going down, I'm going to come over here. So I know I have even on both sides. Now her ears are not the same uh, on both sides in this picture. She can move them independently, unlike me. So I'm going to draw out that first line. It's going down more at an angle. Again, it's still a triangle though. It's just less up than the other ear. So it still kind of has a little bit of a curve, but it flops down quicker and comes into that triangle or like a tortilla kind of shape. And again, faint here. And this is where our eyes are. So I can kind of map in the almond shape And my spacing might not be right right now. I'm gonna go back and fix that. But once I get both down, I can kind of tell like, okay, definitely not spacing that out right. You can see this side is way bigger than this side. So I know I need to bring this eye over. I'm not even gonna bother erasing yet. I think this line is also needs to be moved over so I put my nose in the right spot. There we go, that's a little bit better. So now I can come to my face. It's almost like it's a circle, but the snout comes. So it's coming in, but here we have the snout. Remember this is our chin down here. And it's not quite so dramatic. And I'm going back over it. I'm looking, I'm glancing at my picture and I'm going back to my drawing. I'm going back and forth. My eyes are flicking. I have the picture up on my computer screen and my eyes are looking back and forth because I don't want to start assuming I know what she looks like. I'm also realizing I think the ears are a little small and they come down more so that's that's why I'm working it as lightly as I am. So now we can go on we can kind of see the shape of the snout. We can put some of these lines in to show that it's long, it's coming out towards us. We got some eyebrow effect here. 
and we're just putting these marks in lightly for ourselves so we know how this face is shaped. Now we can go to the nose. It's curved. There is this line across it. Comes down. It's almost a circle, but not quite. We got our nostrils in here. Now we got this lip because we can see both parts of her mouth. Now that I'm feeling a little bit more confident, I can go in and start making some heavier marks. Now you can go ahead, we can add some of the body. We just have her back coming here, her body here. I'm not gonna do too much, but I'm not gonna have it just be a floating head. So I'll just do that. So now I can come back and start making sure when I like a line, I'm gonna make it a little heavier. And we have to think about where is the light hitting? Where is there shadow? So we're not, there's not lines like we would see like in a more in a human face, we have just the value. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase my guidelines because now I'm gonna start adding my shadows and my value, and I don't want these lines to get in the way later. So this is as good a time as any to erase them. And I might end up erasing some of my other lines, but that's okay, because I know where they are. I can still kind of see them because I put them down heavier. So now I can go through, fix up my eyes, because I erase part of them. I can go to my nose and put that down a little bit better. Go back to the mouth. So now I'm gonna start putting down my rough shading. So I'm just gonna be making some quick little marks and the light, look where the light's coming from. So I was using a ring light when I was taking photos of her because I was having fun and she's my model. And so the light is coming directly towards her. So we have darker up here, more light towards the front of her snout and she's actually kind of looking up at us slightly. So we do have natural shadows by the ear. And don't confuse shadows with dark fur. There is a difference. So I'm just gonna go ahead, it's darker around the eyes, cause it's going backwards. It is darker here at this lip, darker where her body meets her neck because it's further back and there's a shadow being cast by the light. A little bit of darkness up here, but you see I'm not pushing as hard and I'm also holding my pencil to the side and I'm holding it differently. This is not how you write, but everyone has their own way of shading. But I find when you have a very point on your pencil and you're like this, you can't get that same amount of shading. You can't get that same value going on. So I actually put it to the side and I shade. And this is just a normal pencil. I'm not using anything fancy. I'm not using, you know, there's some of you guys might know that there's lots of different types of pencils out there, different hardnesses that I could be switching between, but I want you to be able to see what you can do with the things you have around you. So you don't have fancy pencils, that's fine. And you can see there's more shadow on this side of her snout. The light's not hitting that much on top. So we're going in and we're giving it some more value. And I'm gonna go start to start her eyes. And remember, you can't always see the full circle. Like we don't wanna be drawing the circle. Part of it is cut off. There is quite a big reflection in her eye from the ring light as she's staring at the treat on the other side of the camera. And put some of the value in the ears. And I'm doing this really lightly. So we're gonna wanna make sure we're working from dark to light because once you put down a dark shadow, it's even if you erase it, it's never gonna be as light and white as the paper as when you start. So do you remember start 
start, you know, we want to work our way towards that, okay? And we're going to use some soft strokes because it's fur and we don't want hard long ones because we want to be able to tell that it's fur. So I'm changing up my motions. I'm remembering how is the fur on the face? What direction is it going? It's very important to note the direction of the fur and not just do random. So on the nose, it's going back this way, short and soft movements, and we're gonna layer up the texture. We wanna keep our movements small when we're thinking about fur. So we're gonna continue on with this, thinking about the marks, thinking about you want to start to think too about where is there a dark fur, where is there light fur. I can even mark that out. So I have a section here on my dog Pepper that is white. So I'm mapping that out for myself so I don't accidentally put too much dark fur going on right there. I also have a section above the eye that is that light brown. And we're going to keep going with these short, small little movements. And we're going to build up our tone and our value. And this isn't really a process that can be rushed, but this is a sketch. And so remember that it doesn't have to be perfect and you can use your eraser and you can use it to benefit you. You can go ahead and make it softer by taking the eraser and just kind of using it as a smudging effect. You can lighten it if you get too dark. And it just, it takes practice. So continue on and let's keep going. Don't be afraid to layer in the dark I sometimes I think I I keep my value in a tight window but really we want to have all aspects of value in our drawings we want to have our lightest of light and our darkest of dark so we want to make sure when we are having our darkest of dark areas that we're really emphasizing and we're really making them the darkest of dark that way we have a full value drawing so do make sure that you have your whites of the paper in some areas but also your darkest areas as well, because those will really help amp up your drawings. So don't be afraid to do that. Also know when a drawing is done. I sometimes have a hard time figuring that out and sometimes I overdraw or I push it a little bit far and then I notice that I liked it 10 steps back. So do try to keep that in your mind as you go. Stop, take a look back, think about it, and then continue on if you choose to. So I think I'm calling it there for at least now. I might go back to it later tonight, and that's okay. So do know that just because you set it aside and you say you're done, you could go back to it in a day, two days, three days, maybe even a year, and you could work on it again. There's never such thing as saying, I said it was done, so it's done. Always remember that you can pick it up later and rework it or add things to it. But this is a great way to start off trying to learn how to draw a realistic dog. So I hope you enjoyed drawing your dog realistically. Hopefully your first sketch came out pretty good, but don't give up, keep trying. Put this one aside, start a new sketch. Uh, stay with the same dog, switch to a different dog. The principles are still the same with the lines. So keep on going, don't give up. You'll be able to get through it. You'll figure it out. It comes with time. Art is a language of its own and it takes time to get good. So learn how to hold your pencil differently for art. Learn what works for you because I won't always be able to tell you what's the thing that's going to work for you. I hold my pencil weird when I'm doing shading. Maybe you don't. So let me know in the comments below. How do you hold your pencil? What do you want to learn in the future? And as always, if you like the video, hit that like button. Subscribe so you get notified every time I post a new video. And I hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.